In this video, I'll demonstrate how to get started with the iZot SDK on a Raspberry Pi. First, we'll talk about what is a Raspberry Pi. It's a low-cost, credit card-sized Linux computer. It supports both local and remote access, so you can either plug a display and a keyboard and mouse directly into your Pi and use it as a, a standalone computer, or you can plug a serial console into it and access it from a local computer, or you can access it remotely using SSH. We'll, we'll do the latter in this demonstration. The Pi also includes general purpose I.O. that you can use to interact with local sensors and actuators. And I'll show you one of those next. So to get started, what we typically use is a Raspberry Pi with something called the Pi Face Digital, which is a little I.O. board you can get for the Raspberry Pi. We put the two together into an enclosure from Camden Boss. For the Raspberry Pis, we use either a Model B or a Model B Plus and a four gigabyte or larger Class 10 SD flash memory card. Here's some places where you can get a Raspberry Pi. RaspberryPi.org has a listing of their partners at RaspberryPi.org slash buy. One of the partners is Element 14. You can go directly to their website and find Raspberry Pis there. In the United States, Newark is one of the distributors for Element 14. And another good distributor uh, for Pis and other hardware like the Pi is Adafruit.com. The Pi Face Digital is an optional component. We use it just to get some simple digital I.O. for creating simple demonstration applications. It has uh, eight digital inputs and eight digital outputs, uh, a couple relay outputs, and four push buttons on the inputs. You can get a Pi Face Digital also from Element 14 or Newark, and another source is SparkFun. For the software, you'll need two main pieces of software. The first is the iZot SDK, either a standard edition or premium edition. The standard edition is a free download that you can get from echelon.com slash get started, or you can get the premium edition for $895 that gives you additional access to the GitHub project uh, for the SDK and gives you the capability of building custom routers and network interfaces. For integrated development, you can use any Python 3 compatible IDE. The one we'll demonstrate is PyCharm. If you are using a PyCharm, you'll want the professional edition because it provides additional access to uh, remote devices. PyCharm is available for Windows, Mac, OS X, and Linux. A free 30-day trial is available from JetBrains.com. Some additional free software that you will need to get started with the iZot SDK is the SD card formatter available for Windows and Mac OS X from sdcard.org slash downloads. You'll need a way to write an image to an SD card. Uh, for Windows, you can use the Win32 Disk Imager, available from sourceforge.net slash projects slash Win32 Disk Imager. And you can see a listing of uh, other solutions at uh, raspberrypi.org at the location shown here. Finally, you'll need Python 3.3.4 or newer that's available for both Windows and Mac OS X from python.org slash download. Once you've purchased your Raspberry Pi and downloaded the iZot SDK software, you're ready to put the iZot SDK image onto the SD card for your Raspberry Pi. So you run the SD formatter software to do that, click the option button, Change the options for full erase and format size adjustment. Say OK. Click Format. Verify you want to do this. This formats your SD card. It's a very fast process. Now it's done. I click OK and I can exit the SD formatter. Now that I'm formatted the SD flash card, I'm ready to write the image to the flash card. So I downloaded the iZot SDK image from the Echelon website that came in a zip file and I extracted the image file from the zip file. I then run Win32 Disk Imager, select the drive letter for the SD flash card, which in my computer is drive G, click the folder icon to select the image file I downloaded. So this is the SDK image file that I downloaded for the Pi, so confirm it has the PI in the name. Click open and then I click the write button. I get a warning. I'll say yes, I want to continue. That starts writing the card. So you can see here a progress bar starting at the bottom. I'm writing about 22 megabytes a second. So we'll cut now for the next few minutes while it finishes. Now we're back. We've been writing for the last few minutes. The write just finished. I click OK and I can click exit. Now my SD card is ready. I can pull this out of my PC, put it into my Raspberry Pi, and boot up the Raspberry Pi.